within an hour, I went from sitting in the bath, sad, thinking I wasn't gonna meet my baby for weeks, to being in the hospital hooked up to Pitocin. I don't really understand how it works because I didn't want to understand how it works. And I'm losing it at this point. We pushed him out. We, I, I'll take credit for it. I pushed him out. This is so stupid, but I'm obsessed with giving birth. Riser James Waldemar. Riser, a leader, an overcomer, a person who rises to the challenge, a person who does not give up in times of adversity. Welcome home, buddy. Thank you. Oh, him. <laughs> okay, come on. Right there. That is him. Oh, oh, that's so sweet, buddy. Hey, guys. My son just ripped, you know what, like, he farted. Take two. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Brielle. Hello, welcome. Um, today will be our birth story. I had my son, Riser, now three weeks ago. It goes by like that. It's absolutely crazy. I feel like I'm gonna blink and he's gonna be almost three, like my toddler. I wanted to sit down and share this video with you guys because if you haven't already watched it, here is our birth vlog where we did share almost every detail of our birth. So the point of me telling you that I already have a toddler is pretty much to establish that this was not my first birth. I'm gonna grab Riser, hang on. Are you awake? Oh, there you go. Did you poop? Yes, you did. Okay, hold please, I need to change his diaper and then we'll get back to it. All right, we're back. What was I even saying? There are so many supportive and loving comments saying, oh my gosh, you're so strong. How are you so positive? This is the type of birth that I want, etc., etc." Et Which, thank you, that means the world to me. And honestly, it was a positive and beautiful experience. And what you saw was the truth. But I really wanna sit down today and talk about what happened and the parts where I wasn't filming. The one part is when I was getting my epidural. A giant needle is going in my back. It's a little stressful. I kind of wanted to just focus on getting through that versus, okay, I'm being filmed, which I never really put on a facade when I'm filming, but you know what I'm saying. I also don't like needles, but now I'm just going on a tangent. Thankfully, we were very, there's always freaking construction happening on my street when I'm trying to film. Why? Why? Honestly, it was easier than my first birth with my son Grayson. There was scary moments like Grayson's heart rate dropping and the fact that his umbilical cord was tied in a knot, which can be very scary because if it gets pulled too tight, nutrients aren't being given to the baby. And, and I know that there are a lot of first time mamas who are gonna give birth here soon who are watching my videos. And I do want to do some sort of Q&A. So if you do have questions, leave them down below and I'll make a video in the future. I'm only 24, a lot of my friends don't have babies. So I didn't really have someone to ask. So I'll be your girl. If you know me, you know I don't hold back. Maybe I get a little TMI sometimes, but I'll definitely be real with you. Okay, so to kind of give you the backstory, what had happened was I went to the doctor for my regular checkup. When I went to the doctor, they were worried that I possibly had preeclampsia. I'm not gonna give you a description of what that is because honestly, I don't really know. But they ended up sending me to the hospital to test me and all that kind of stuff because if it were to be preeclampsia, they may have wanted to even induce me that day. That's what I think she was implying. It all kind of happened very fast. Because of the Rona, you can't tour the hospitals before. Like you can go online on their websites. It's just like random pictures. It doesn't give you a good feel for the hospital. Everything came back perfectly fine. But when I was there, it was dark, gloomy, kind of smelled a little moldy. I don't know, it just wasn't a very welcoming vibe. I kind of just decided, you know what? This happened for a reason because it honestly kind of showed me that I didn't want to give birth there. Nothing wrong with that hospital. Everyone was awesome. It wasn't my vibe, right? The hospital that I ended up giving birth at that you guys watched in the birth vlog was the same hospital I gave birth to Grayson at. So I already knew it, I already was familiar with it, and I really liked my experience, I truly did. When I switched to the new clinic, I had to do another checkup just to meet the new doctor and so they could switch over the paperwork and all that jazz. When she checked me in that appointment, I was dilated to a four. A few days later, I was having insane amount of pain down there. And so I went in on a Friday. 
At this point, I had already been scheduled for an induction. I was supposed to be induced Monday the 31st. So when I was getting checked at the hospital, the nurses were like, no, sadly, you haven't really changed much. You're not in active labor, so you can go home. I wasn't super defeated because at that point, my dad had taken Grayson and Taylor and I were gonna have the weekend to ourselves and I'd be induced Monday morning. I'm packing up my bags to leave the hospital. This lady walks in and she says, hi, uh, Brielle, I actually have some bad news. Um, we've been really busy this weekend and I've had to cancel any uh, elective induction. In dunk why can't I say that word? You know what I'm saying, okay? When they give you Pitocin and they put you into labor when you're not actually in labor. <sighs> Jeez. Oh, I'm also like exposing myself here. Sorry about that. Pretty much she was telling me you're not giving birth on Monday. I can't say that word right now. I don't know what is happening to my brain. And I was like, I absolutely understand because obviously the medical inductions come first. So the mamas whose babies could be in distress or who are already way over their due date, which having been that mama, I fully support them going before me, right? At that point I was like, I could be pregnant for another two weeks. Truly, I could because I didn't know how far back their schedule was, right? So Monday comes around the 30th when I was supposed to be induced. I wake up at 7.15 that morning, like right as I was supposed to be getting to the hospital, I looked at my phone and I was like, thinking this was the day I was supposed to meet my baby. I just had a slow morning. I had my coffee, I took a bath. I get out of the bath, I check my phone, and it says I have a missed call and a voicemail. If you watch the birth vlog, you know, you know. Just pretty much like, hey, if you wanna come in around one today, we can fit you in and just call me back if that works for you. And I was like, huh? For what, where, why? She said the hospital's name, so I had an inkling. This was at like 12.20 and they wanted me to come in by one. So 40 minutes from then. And I live 45 minutes from the hospital. Thankfully, they were really chill and they're like, yeah, just get here when you can. Thank goodness I do YouTube and pre-packed all of my bags and uh, was prepared. We just grabbed the bags and left, right? But my hair was wet, so I was like blow drying it while I was calling to inform all my family members. Anyways, this is the longest intro to a birth story ever. But I wanted to give you guys that backstory because it was part of everything that happened and why I was so like, oh my gosh, this is happening and just in shock for the longest time. I truly thought it was going to be weeks. We get to the hospital. Honestly, I think it was like 120, so we were only 20 minutes late. I put on the hospital gown, but they start the Pitocin. Um, Pitocin is what helps induce labor. And I'm just sitting there like, this is not happening. I cannot believe this is happening right now. I truly thought I was dreaming. I can't process it. Pitocin did take quite a while for contractions to really start getting intense. I was feeling them, but they just felt like mild period cramps. So we started Pitocin around two something. I was relaxing, we were reading, we were chilling. It was fun. And when is the last time Taylor and I got to hang out just the two of us? It's a rare thing. Uh, around 6 p.m. is when they started getting intense. They were pretty consistent and they were pretty strong. So I got off the Pitocin, I was trying to labor on my own, and within, I wanna say like 20 to 30 minutes, the contractions completely stopped, like nothing. I felt like I could run a freaking marathon. I was all hyped up on adrenaline from being in labor and meeting my baby soon, but no contractions. So I'm sitting there on the birthing ball, trying to keep them going. I was doing all the things and nothing. I couldn't get them to continue. I was so bummed. Honestly, if you've never given birth, the worst part for me is the IV in the arm and the blood pressure cuff. Hate it. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. Also, don't ever get the Monica. This is my personal opinion. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have phrased it that way. It's how they monitor baby's heartbeat and your contractions mobily. You know what I mean? So you can be up and walking around or not connected to the one that has the printing. I really know a lot of stuff. So around 9.30, I go back on Pitocin. Those contractions literally went from zero to 100. It was awful. When I first started out on Pitocin, they gradually got bad, right? But when you go from no contractions for almost an hour to them literally feeling like you're dying, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I was dilated to a seven at that point, and that's the farthest along I had ever been because with Grayson I got an epidural at like three and a half so it's probably like 15 to 20 minutes after uh, the Pitocin had kicked back in and these contractions were really strong that I was like all right I need the epidural I need it now like please 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 and I wanted to 
feel the process more because once you get the epidural, you're numb, which we're gonna get into that in a minute because I was not fully numb this time. That was my mindset in the moment. I just, I'm not saying tapped out, but after 20 minutes of that, I was like, okay, I got it. I have to get the epidural, I need it now. I said this in the vlog, but I don't know if I was at the point where I either could get it or not get it. Do you know what I mean? Because there is like kind of a cutoff point, but they were kind of rushing to like get me the epidural, maybe because they could physically see how much pain I was in. Maybe Taylor said something because he left the room to go get the nurse. Maybe he was like, okay, she's really, <laughs> she's really struggling here. I don't know. I was never screaming. I did kind of scream and get loud with Grayson because I'd never experienced the pain before. I was truly calm the whole time, but I definitely was like, I need the epidural now. I need it, I need it, I need it, right? If you've never had an epidural before, you have to like sit on the edge of the bed hunched over, right? I literally said to myself, oh, they won't see my ugly black bra, and here I am showing it to you. As you are having those insane contractions, you have to stay perfectly still as they put a giant needle in your back, okay? Keep that in mind as I tell you what I'm about to tell you. I'm doing that, right? And they're like, good job, you're almost done. As I'm having contractions one to two minutes apart, right? So they're constant and it takes a little while for them to, sorry, I'm getting very intense here. It takes a little while for them to put the epidural in, right? What seems like hours is probably only a few minutes, but when you're in that amount of pain, you're like, oh my gosh, just get it done with. And I'm breathing through the contractions, my nurse, she was absolutely incredible, I love her. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I can't do this, I can't do this. They're like, no, you've got this, right? I don't really understand how it works because I didn't want to understand how it works. I'm just like, help me not feel anything because I feel like I'm dying. They put a catheter in my back, but then there was blood in the catheter and I had to start over. And I'm losing it at this point. That's why I'm like, I really appreciate your guys' messages about me being so positive and this being such an inspiration and all that kind of stuff, but there were some moments when I was losing it. They say, I'm so sorry, but we have to do it again. And I just start crying. I'm like, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. They're like, no, you can. It's only a few minutes until it starts kicking in. Like, you've got this. When you're experiencing those contractions, you want to be swaying. You want to be moving. You want someone to be pushing on your back. When you're getting your epidural, you can't have any of that. So now it feels like 10 minutes has gone by. I truly don't know. I blacked out. Finally, the epidural goes in. The anesthesiologist, I want to clarify, she was incredible. She was great. She did an amazing job. But that was the the worst of it was when I was getting my epidural, I don't wish that on my worst enemy because it was awful. We're very blessed that that was the worst of it. It goes either way. You get your epidural and it takes a long time for you to progress or you get your epidural and you dilate really quick. I had my epidural for a long time with Grayson before I ended up giving birth. With Riser, I got it at like 10 and we ended up giving birth by midnight so two hours we progressed pretty freaking quickly when you get your epidural something that i didn't know about first time around is you get the shakes i think it's a very common uh side effect from the epidural i could barely talk like your jaws just going la, 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 and you're just shaking no matter how many blankets you put on you you're not even cold you're just you got the shakes and the jitters jitters that's better i got the epidural the nurse stayed in the room to monitor me i'm not sure if it's because I had bled into the catheter because I don't remember anyone doing that last time around when I got my epidural. As riser started to descend or lower into the canal, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there was the most insane amount of pressure down there. It was a lot, okay? So whenever you saw me saying, oh my gosh, I have to poop. It feels like I have to poop, I'm gonna poop. I was joking because that's what the nurse said. Like, it's gonna feel like you have to poop. I didn't actually have to poop. I've heard that when you poop, they like clean it up really quick. No one did that, but I really don't think I did. But anyways, I'm like, I feel like I have to poop. And she looks and she's like, yep, you're ready to go. You're at a 10, ready to go. And I was like, huh? I'm like, I'm at a 10. She's like, yep. I'm like, I'm ready to go. She's like, yep. I'm like, so I'm gonna have this baby? And she's like, yep. I wasn't processing, right? I was just in shock. Everyone comes into the room and these nurses were so unbelievably nice. The doctor who delivered Riser was a doctor we saw for our entire pregnancy at the clinic with Grayson, so that was really cool. Fun fact, the doctor who delivered Grayson was the doctor my mom saw during her whole pregnancy with me. Does that make sense? Were you following that? I was at such a like euphoric high like knowing that I was gonna meet him, that I was just like, you guys are amazing. Like they were so encouraging, being like, you got this mama, you're doing great. And I'm like, I didn't realize you guys were cheerleaders too. Like they were nurses, but they were also the most amazing cheerleaders. As I was pushing, the epidural, 
I, maybe it was because I had it so much longer with Grayson, but it didn't make me feel the contractions, but there was the most insane pressure as he was coming out. It hurt bad. Aren't I not supposed to be feeling anything? You know what I mean? This is supposed to be an epidural. I'm not supposed to feel anything from here down. Like what is happening? I guess every time is different. I don't know, comment down below if you've ever had that experience. But then we pushed him out. We, I, I'll take credit for it. I pushed him out. You guys, it's the most incredible feeling that first moment when you see, when you see your baby for the first time, it's, I can't explain it other than it's like the best high in the world. Like I'm tearing up, wow, hormones. I feel unbelievably blessed that it did go so well, that I was able to joke around and that I was positive during this experience. And it's truly because I kind of knew what to expect. It's one of the best days of your life. Cool. Grayson's birth and Riser's birth and Taylor and I's wedding someday, whenever that happens. I'm tempted to just take him to the courthouse any day now because I'm tired of waiting. It's one of the best days of your life. So my biggest, biggest, biggest tip to all those mamas out there who are scared and who are unsure of what to expect and who want to have a positive birth is just to remember the pain will not last forever. Just like the pain you experience during pregnancy, you immediately forget about them the second you have your baby. Just like you'll immediately forget about your laboring pain the second you have your baby in your arms, right? I mean, it still hurts, which I'll go through and make a whole postpartum video about all the things that happen the second you push the baby out. There's a lot of things that I did not know about before I gave birth to Grayson. And I honestly forgot about, and then it happened to me again. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a thing. Love that. As painful as it is, use the times in between to bond with your significant other, to really soak in that time of laboring because it is such a beautiful experience. And it is something that you only, unless you're gonna be Kate plus eight or whatever that show is. It's something you only experience a few, however many babies you wanna have, times in your life. This is so stupid, but I'm obsessed with giving birth. It's such an amazing experience, and yes, can be scary at times, and yes, hurts like a, you know what? It's such a beautiful thing, so really soak it up. Just know that the pain is not gonna last forever, and you're gonna be holding your baby so very soon. And pray, if you are religious, pray, at least for me, when I am feeling anxious and when I was having hard times during both of the labors. God is so there in those moments and just washes like a wave of relief over you and it helps. So if you are religious, pray, pray, pray. That is my birth story. I feel like it's kind of just me talking about what you saw in the birth vlog, but I did want to clarify that it wasn't all, what do they say, roses and daisies? That's not even close. I'm gonna put it here. I'm sure it'll come to me later. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I do wanna do a Q&A, whether you have questions about birth, whether you have questions about being a mama too, whether you have pregnancy questions, all that kind of stuff. Comment them down below because I wanna help you guys out. And I want us to feel like girlfriends, you know? If you have a question that you maybe don't wanna ask a woman in your life, you're worried it's a little TMI, I got you. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I post new videos every Saturday. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed week, guys. Bye.